Assalamualaikum. Okay, so today we will learn about fundamental of firewall, chapter three in our introduction to computer security course. By the on by the end of this chapter, uh, please make sure you be able to explain how firewall works, what is firewall, okay, what type of firewall that uh that uh, suitable for your situation and then your your organization and uh, how can we evaluate firewall solution differentiate between uh, four types of firewall we have packet filter firewall stateful packet inspection we have circuit level ins inspection and uh, application gateway firewall okay and lastly we will discuss on how to implement the firewalls based on uh, what we have learned uh, in this chapter as for the introduction what is firewall firewalls are one of the fundamental devices used to secure the network in this chapter we will learn about the importance of firewalls in our network and our computer and then uh, we will learn about the basic underlying of our firewall function and then the types of firewall that are available in the market and how to implement the firewall in our organization and then this chapter explore the basic of firewall and how they work based on the evaluation done here you will be able to determine under what situation a firewall solution is appropriate for your situation and your organization so what is firewall? A firewall is a network security device that monitors incoming and outgoing network traffic and permits or blocks data packets based on a set of security rules that have been set in the firewall itself. The firewall can be in the form of software and hardware. Sebagai contoh, uh, kita boleh lihat firewall uh, yang memang terdapat di dalam PC atau laptop kita yang kita telah dapat eh kita dapat daripada operating system windows operating system itself okey so dia dah bagi sekali firewall sama ada kita turn on ataupun tidak uh, itu kita kena check balik uh, jenis firewall yang biasa terdapat dalam sesuatu operating system is kita panggil basic firewall ataupun packet filtering firewall tetapi berbeza kalau kita berada di company okey satu organisasi yang besar biasanya mereka memerlukan dedicated firewall yang um, siap dengan hardware ni sekali eh. uh, okay, hardware dia dia punya rupa bentuk sama seperti server okay? kalau kita pernah lihat server ok and in summary kalau kita tengok kat sini uh, firewall will become a barrier ataupun will become the security guard ataupun become the police uh, that that control eh, the barrier between the world and your network okay so whatever traffic that need to go to your network will be safeguard or will be filtered or will be uh, controlled by the firewall okay so the firewall will be putting here okay so imagine that you have a server farm here and then you have a, another subnet eh? contohnya you the lab 1 lab 2 lab 3 so Whatever will uh, yang nak masuk ke dalam network kita akan melalui firewall. So firewall ni dia akan check, okay? Dia akan bagi dia akan check packet yang nak masuk tu, okay? High packet, you nak pergi mana? So packet tu akan respond, okay? I nak pergi 192.5.4.1. So firewall akan check sama ada uh, this is the legitimate legitimate packet or not. Okay, kalau dia ni memang uh, uh, packet yang requested by this server, okay, so firewall tu akan allow packet tu masuk, then dia akan directkan packet tu kepada server tersebut. Okay, alright. So actually, uh, packet yang masuk tu actually uh, so firewall ni akan tahu eh, contohnya ini web, uh, ini kita, okay person A kat sini Ahmad 
dia request satu website ok, satu website uh, contohnya website ni website uh, Facebook ok, so ini ialah firewall Facebook so mereka, firewall Facebook ni akan check uh, hey packet, you daripada mana you nak pergi ke mana so nanti packet Ahmad ni cakap ok, I daripada uh, source address 200.x.x.x port number 80 I nak pergi ke 192.5.48.1 ok so and then firewall akan check lah sama ada paket ni legitimate adakah dia IP spoof ataupun dia ni part of the DOS kalau kalau paket tu nampak healthy dia akan uh, bagilah kita masuk ke server Facebook contohnya kita nak login so server Facebook, Facebook akan buat processing ok dia allow kita login and then dia, bagi, dia akan pass back kita punya paket tu maka kita nampak kita akan dapat login kita dapat tengok gambar web page dan sebagainya ok so but before that actually akan berlaku um, filtering lah dekat firewall ni so that's the basic concept of firewall and then uh, nanti kita tengok eh Firewall ni uh, can provide a uh, packet filtering, basic packet filtering or advanced packet filtering. And then dia ada juga stateful packet filtering. Ada firewall yang memerlukan user authentication di mana kalau you nak pakai sesuatu network tu, contohnya you pergi ke hotel then nak pakai wifi network. Sometimes the it require you a dedicated username and password account kan. So that That is the example of user authentication. Dia bukan wifi tu punya password tau. Dia memang memerlukan kita ada kita nak kita nak connect to okay, hotel ABC SSID dia. Then kita connect hotel ABC, okay? And then kat situ laptop kita dah tulis connected. Connected sepatutnya kita buka browser dah boleh buka internet, betul tak? Tetapi kalau kita Uh, once kita dah connect to the SSID Hotel ABC, bila kita buka browser, kita nak buka Google dia akan keluar lagi login form username and password so, ada firewall yang kita boleh set dia sebagai required user authentication then, and then ada juga firewall yang client application authentication ok, for example firewall tu akan check hanya sesetengah program ataupun software ataupun application saja yang boleh run ok ok contohnya um, satu firewall tu dia boleh block eh penggunaan browser ok penggunaan Skype punya software penggunaan game so dia ada firewall yang dia boleh um, check application apa yang allow and disallow so itu kita akan lihat nanti ok so uh, maybe kita dah nampak gambaran asas dekat uh, page sebelum ni and the question is where is the firewall located and where, where is the best place to put our firewall kalau kita tengok dekat sini these are our uh, standard ataupun common atau common network structure eh, di mana kita ada network kat sini sorry kita ada PC ataupun subnetting eh subnet A subnet B subnet C and then kita ada router atau router okey router kita dah belajar okey dia akan uh, mengarahkan meng, uh, routekan packet okey okey so sebelum router kita akan ada firewall okey and then dekat sini sepatutnya uh, a ya, kita kata kabel modem ataupun a uh, router juga eh, kat sini pun biasanya kita akan ada router juga eh. then sini internet and then sini internet cloud and then sini barulah kita punya requester ataupun orang yang nak connect dengan kita ok, dalam kes ni contohnya ni PC1 PC uh, PC awak eh, PC awak, adik dan abang so, bila kita nak pergi ke internet dia akan melalui router dan Terusnya, dia akan melalui firewall. Fire, masa nak melepasi firewall ni, firewall akan tanya, awak nak ke mana? Oh, saya nak ke Facebook. So, uh, dekat firewall ni, dia akan check. Okay, Facebook ni website dia legitimate ke tak? Okay, uh, kalau website Facebook tu okay, dia akan pass lah. Dia akan uh, take note dia punya IP address um, uh, Facebook and then dia akan pass to 
another gateway ataupun modem ataupun router kat sini barulah kat sini dia akan direct-kan pergi ke internet nanti kita akan belajar um, actually dekat firewall ni kita boleh set eh sorry dia ada setting uh, kita panggil network address translation di mana bila mana kita nak pergi ke Facebook dia akan translate Facebook kepada IP address uh, public IP address Facebook barulah dia boleh cari dekat internet Okay, so itu uh, kita panggil NAP. So, where is the best place to locate the firewall is, of course, um, behind the firewall, behind the router. Okay, router. Okay, normally kalau ni subnet A, subnet B, subnet C, kita akan ada switches kat sini lah. Switches, switches. Okay, uh, tu in case dalam satu satu subnet kita ada 30 PC Contoh you ada 30 PC, 30 PC, 30 PC So, kesemua PC tu akan connect to, to satu switch Satu switch, satu switch Dan switch tu akan connect to router And then bawalah ke firewall dan seterusnya Okay, okay router ni pula Okay, router ni ada juga eh, yang uh, network di mana In between subnet atau in between PC ni dia ada router eh router 1 router 2 router 3 okey di dalam router juga kita boleh setkan firewall okey basic firewall so banyak lagi banyak firewall lagi baguslah kita punya network uh, infrastructure okey so so far kita dah faham apa itu firewall dan uh, network diagram kita kat mana letaknya firewall so now kita lihat eh Jenis firewall. What are the types of firewall available in the market? Ataupun uh, to implement a firewall. Apa jenis firewall yang kita perlukan? Sepanjang hidup kita, as of now, semua orang akan um, sudah kenal firewall. Sebab pernah nampak firewall dekat operating system. Betul tak? Kan? Kita ada antivirus dan dalam antivirus kita ada firewall. Okay, fine. Tapi dalam uh, OS kita sendiri pun, kita ada firewall. So, itu firewall apa? Eh? Firewall yang kita ada dekat PC yang Windows bagi tu, kita panggil packet filter firewall. Ataupun screening firewall. Ataupun basic level firewall. Okay? So, that's the first one. Ataupun the basic firewall yang kita ada selama ini. But, kalau kita tengok uh, bila kita berada di industri, ada company, sesebuah company yang terlalu ramai dia punya user eh. Sampai contoh dalam satu uh, KLCC tu, uh, Petronas saja ada uh, few level eh of dia orang punya employee. Contohnya sampai 5 level employee mereka. Employee sometimes boleh ada sampai 500, okay, 1,000. So, It's very difficult to monitor ataupun to control our user eh dalam satu company tu. Ada yang suka uh, main game, ada yang suka install uh, streaming, ada yang suka install software-software uh, yang tidak berkaitan. Okay, so dekat situ mereka, kita memerlukan application gateway firewall. Okay, alright. Uh, so application gateway and then kita juga ada circuit level gateway. And then let's see, we have stateful packet inspection, eh, SPI. So kalau kita tengok kat sini, um, daripada atas, okay, basic, boleh dikatakan basic to advance, uh, basic to intermediate, intermediate, advance. So daripada atas ke bawah, eh, level of basic to advance dia. So apakah firewall? Apakah fungsi fungsi firewall ni? What are the function of each and every single this firewall okay let look look at it okay so the first one is packet filter so macam saya cakap tadi uh, like i mentioned just now packet filter the most basic type of firewall also known as screening firewall you can find it in your own pc you can find it in your wi-fi Okay, contoh you dapat unify 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 you boleh unify dia bagi you router betul tak Router dengan modem sekarang dia dah gabungkan tau. Okay. Dalam router tu juga, ada firewall. Okay. Kita panggil basic firewall yang uh, kebanyakan vendor 
router ni bila dia bagi je you modem ataupun router ni dalam tu ada basic firewall the thing is you need to get inside the router okay by type pergi kat browser and then you type url router you contohnya 10.1.1.10 pergi masuk dalam tu and then you enablekan firewall yang ada dalam router awak so itu in case uh, so and that that's good enough okay Uh, to avoid daripada kena DOS ataupun to avoid daripada orang try to scan your router eh? nanti kita akan belajar nanti ok so itu router kat mana lagi kita dapat screening firewall ni dekat PCU dekat antivirus so tiga ni lah eh? uh, yang, kita, uh, yang kita pernah jumpa firewall ok operate on a, on a transport and network layer of TCP IP so Uh, since this is uh, firewall ni dia uh, dia filter packet dia screening packet so packet ataupun data ni kalau ikut dekat OS, uh, 7 OSI layer okay, packet atau data ni dia run dekat transport and network layer so nanti uh, OSI layer nanti you akan belajar detail in your network class okay? networking class So, uh, okay. So apa yang screening firewall boleh buat? Apa yang dia buat ni? Okay, contoh eh. Firewall yang ada dekat you punya router atau firewall yang ada dekat you punya PC, laptop, Windows 10 you tu, dia boleh scan basic. Okay, basic thing saja. Apa yang dia boleh scan? Ni kena ingat eh. Dia akan, dia boleh scan source address. Destination address, source port, destination port, and protocol type. Okay. Imagine dalam paket kita kan macam gambar raja yang pertama tadi kan kita nampak kan satu paket keluar, satu paket masuk. Apa yang firewall tanya? Dia tanya, hey you daripada mana? And then paket tu akan beritahu, oh source address I, I daripada Pahang. Uh, PCI punya source address ialah 200.1.20.50. Uh, to source address and then dia tanya you nak pergi mana oh I nak pergi destination dia kepada facebook.com uh, so dia macam tu eh uh, port apa oh I nak lalu port 80 uh, ok port ni saya dah hantarkan banyak kali uh, kalau kita buka browser kita buka facebook melalui browser kan so kalau nak buka facebook melalui browser buka website melalui browser kita hanya boleh melalui port number 80 atau 445 ok 80 atau 445 HTTPS ok so tu dia uh, source port and protocol type pula apa untuk buka website of course kita perlu menggunakan protocol type HTTP kalau kita buka email protocol type dia apa SMTP simple mail transfer protocol kalau kita buka nak transfer data ke dalam server kita pakai FTP file transfer protocol streaming video lain ok dan uh, nak main game sometimes ada protokol dia ok so itu dia protokol eh so I hope uh, you already understand what is what protokol is ok I have mentioned in chapter 1 or chapter 2 ok so please uh, open up your notes ok so example apa yang kita ada Kaspersky personal AV firewall McAfee personal AV or firewall and in you in your unified router you ada Windows 10 Windows 10 you ada firewall so firewall apa ni packet filter firewall ataupun screening firewall okay that the basic one okay Okay, so we have the packet here. So, apa yang dia the, the, the check tadi? Dia check source port, destination port, source address, destination address, of course. And then, dia akan check protocol, kan? Hmm. Data dia check tak? Data dia tak check, okay? Kalau you tengok kat sini, ni contoh packet, satu packet. Okay, they does not compare packet. No authentication, okay? Uh, sebab dia back, packet filter, kan? So, this are the advantage, eh? Susceptible to sin and ping flood attacks. We have learned this in our uh, in our previous chapter. So that's why, uh, you can follow me types of attack dulu kat chapter 2 eh, so that you understand what is sin and ping flood attack. So 
susceptible meaning means that there must be uh there may be a potential eh, for you uh to to be attacked by sin and pink flood attack so maksudnya packet filter ni tak berapa power lah untuk hadapi dos attack okay does not track packets okay does not look at the packet data just the header okay dia tak check data eh. so maksudnya kalau dalam data ni ada scripting ke javascript ke uh, malware ke dia tak check dia hanya check source port destination port source address destination address dan protocol type not necessarily the most secure firewall of course okay so maksudnya uh, kalau boleh ada duit lebih kena pakai eh kalau company tu ada duit lebih kena pakai yang advanced level lah Okay, um, biasanya nak pakai uh, firewall ni, kalau you nak pakai, dia tak perlukan login eh. Uh, no authentication, meaning that dia tak perlukan login. You buka laptop, buka browser, terus boleh run. Tapi firewall tu run at the back, betul tak? You bayangkan kalau dia perlukan authentication, every single you... Uh, You, you dah masuk ke desktop, you nak buka browser, you kena log in. Ha, tu maksudnya authentication. Eh, di mana dia nak dia nak kenali you dulu, okay? firewall tu nak kenali. Betul tak awak ni orangnya betul? Ha, macam tu. Kalau betul, barulah dia bagi you pakai komputer. Ha, so, itu contoh eh, no authentication. Does not track packet ni nanti kita akan check. Nanti. Okay, so that's the the disadvantages of packet filter. Okay, so, kita tengok apa packet, uh, packet filter uh, rules yang kita boleh buat eh. Okay, file, bila bermain dengan firewall, whenever we we want to configure a firewall, the jargon or the keywords that normally we use in setting the firewall is, we call it, we call it as rules. What are the rules, okay, that we need to set, that we want to set in our firewall. Okay, for example, Uh, in a firewall, we want to allow okay, the connection from our server to another server, from server A to another to server B. So we need to set in the firewall the IP address and the protocol and the port number. Okay, so that is the the, the example of rules here. Eh? So you dah tahu apa itu rules. Okay, so what are the rules yang you boleh set dekat packet filter? You boleh set protocol, okay, macam yang sebut tadi, FS, FST, FTP, SMTP, POP3, ni apa? Ini untuk apa? Untuk email, eh? POP3 dan SMTP untuk email. So, we have HTTP, HTTPS, and then what else? Uh, and others uh, protocol lah, okay. So, and then dekat sini, uh, firewall ni juga kita boleh setkan source and source port, destination port and source IP address maksudnya apa yang uh, kita dah belajar tadi lah eh? uh, yang ni kat mana nak set sebenarnya kita boleh set kat dalam firewall ok ok so I hope you can proceed with application gateway if you have any question please uh, comment below okay in the in in our class channel ataupun uh, in our uh, youtube channel here okay so uh, next is application gateway application gateway also known as application proxy or application level proxy it's operate on application layer if you can see here we have um Okay, I thought the, this is OSI layer. This is not OSI layer. In OS, OSI layer, okay, um, this firewall will run on the application level. Okay, application layer. Okay, so, apa yang application gateway ni buat? Okay, macam kita tengok tadi, packet filter, dia hanya check packets, eh, packets data. Packets data punya header uh, and data uh, and protocol saja. Tetapi untuk application layer, dia akan 
it will examine the connection between the client and the server applications. So the firewall will looking at the what types of application allow. Okay, in in the uh, in their connection. Okay. It enable the administrator to specify what application are allowed and disallowed. Okay, and then this firewall require the user to perform user authentication first. Okay. So for example, uh, if the administrator wants to allow, uh, sorry, if the uh, administrator need to specify what application that the company or the network can uh, allow okay for example browser they will allow um, skype software and then they will allow uh, google meet software or sorry uh, microsoft microsoft uh, team software okay okay that is the example of software that the the, the administrator can allow how about the game? Okay, so the administrator need to administrator can uh, specify what are the software, the game software that they they will disallow. Okay. Okay, so the, that is the application gateway. So this is the advantage of application gateway. Since application gateway need double minding and um software level okay so dia ni banyak akan banyak ber, akan banyak bermain dengan web okay so cara dia nak filter tu quite heavy ya eh? dia akan check um software okay so it require more system resources system resources here means uh web eh? penggunaan web okay but um Walaupun application gateway nampak dah macam intermediate uh, level of firewall, uh, dia masih lagi susceptible to flood attack, sin, sin flood and ping not that because of the um, authentication uh, practice yang uh, kalau kita tengok sini eh, due to time it takes to authenticate user, okay? Um, Apa maksudnya kat sini, uh, most probably, okay, uh, bila ada the require username and password, there is a potential of kita panggil auto-guessing password attack, okay, di mana attacker dia boleh menggunakan tools untuk buat seolah-olah nak buat login, okay. Uh, okay? Um, for your info, kita ada big hackers ni, bila nampak sesuatu username and password kita dia akan menggunakan dua teknik eh satu auto guessing auto guessing password uh, sorry uh, manual guessing password and then uh, the second one is auto guessing password ataupun kita panggil sebagai brute force brute force attack eh b r u t e brute force attack so application gateway ni okey kalau dia kena eh, dia kena dengan brute force attack Okay, for example, eh, normally eh, bila attacker dia nak juga masuk menggunakan uh, network yang ada application gateway ni, dia akan diminta untuk uh, login kan. Okay, kena masuk username and password. So, biasanya kita pun akan, uh, attacker akan try lah. Contohnya dia akan try masuk admin, admin 123, admin 12345 macam tu. Okay, so tu manual. How about kalau dia guna automatic guessing password? So, dekat sini, application gateway ni, dia akan busy eh, authenticating at, authenticating username and password yang dimasukkan oleh attacker ni tadi. So, disebabkan tu, dia akan susceptible to flooding attack. So, dia dia still lagi boleh dikatakan boleh uh, kena flood attack, eh, DOS attack. Okay. So, bila mana dia busy eh, replying ataupun authenticating the attack ni, username and password ni, so that dia akan makin bertambah eh, kerja dia untuk uh, authenticate, untuk check uh, user, untuk check 
hmm. software yang dah sedia ada along with the attacker punya uh, flooding attack ni so dia boleh down lah kat, kat situ ok so uh, another advantage disadvantage of application gateway is once connection is made packets are not checked so this are the second time you hear packet are not checked or, ataupun packets are not uh, cannot be tracked Ok, cannot be uh, compare kan. So, nanti kita akan tengok apa firewall yang boleh check packet ataupun compare packet ni. Eh. So, example yang uh, kita boleh dapat kat sini ialah Microsoft Azure Application Gateway and then kita juga ada Firebox, Firebox by Watchbox, Watchguard and Technology. Bukan Watchbox, Watchguard Technology. Ok. Okay, next kita masuk circuit level gateway mon. Okay, circuit level gateway firewall. Okay, circuit circuit level gateway monitor TCP handshake and other network protocol session initiation initiation messages across the network. Okay, circuit level gateway ni uh, kalau kita tengok dia level ketiga ataupun boleh dikatakan uh, nak hampir kepada advance punya. Uh, firewall eh, di mana uh, this is the more secure than application gateway and then uh, it typically implemented on high end equipment and then uh, so how it works first uh, they will authenticate the user and then once user tu dah authenticated okay, user kena masuk username and password once user dah authenticated a virtual circuit eh, will be Uh, will be created and used to pass the bytes ataupun the packet between the client and the proxy server okay so once okay contoh ni ni outside outside the host and then this inside the host okay once user dah authenticated okay packet yang lalu tu okay dia akan create satu virtual uh, tunnel eh virtual circuit virtual tunneling ok dan packet yang travel tu akan melalui tunneling tersebut ok so kalau ada PC nombor 2 ni ok once it is authenticated dia akan lalu tunnel dia tersendiri ya eh. contohnya ni uh, dia akan lalu daripada out kepada in here ok uh, macam tu ok so setiap connection tu dia akan they will have it owns Uh, virtual circuit ok so bila mana packet tu uh, melalui a dedicated circuit uh, macam ni ok so outsiders orang lain ok others people cannot see eh, cannot see the packets uh, ok sebab dia berada di dalam satu tunnel khas so tu yang dia masukkan dengan external user only see the proxy IP not the internal client IP ok, okay. so external user dia tak nampak lah IP dia dia macam seolah-olah tak wujud ok kalau kita tengok lagi kat sini ok uh, these are the advantage uh, these are the example of application gateway and circuit level gateway Dua-duanya perlukan uh, user authentication. Contohnya kalau application gateway, once user dah authenticate, eh, dah masuk username and password, dan dia dah authenticated, then packet tu, uh, user tu akan masuk dalam network, dan dia boleh uh, berjalan-jalan lah. Dia boleh buat connection lah dalam network tersebut. Tapi kalau circuit level gateway, once dia dah uh, login, uh, once dia dah authenticated, okay, dia akan melalui their own virtual circuit. Eh, virtual circuit is established and the and the packet will uh, bypass along the virtual circuit. So, dekat sini, user tak nampak. Okay? Kita tak nampak. Kalau ada sniffer ataupun ada man in the middle attack yang try untuk, dia duduk kat sini, try untuk uh, baca eh, packet-packet yang lalu ni. So, dia tak nampak lah dekat circuit level ni. Dia dia nampak macam, eh macam tak ada apa-apa connection. Uh, 
Ah, so tu dia ah uh, kehebatan circle level gateway. Okay, connection tu dia melalui dia own virtual circuit. So um, itu ni masuk kena external system do not see internal system may not may not work for some implementation. Okay, example uh, early ya eh, early development atau early example of circuit level gateway yang telah dibangunkan oleh Amrita Labs. Okay, software. Okay, so you boleh google lah. Okay, so these are the example of circuit level gateway. So yeah, quite good and advanced uh, ataupun advanced concept. Okay. Uh, but we have another types of firewall which is stateful packet inspection ataupun SPI. Boleh dikatakan the most advanced one, okay, um, yang paling high level lah, okay. Uh, the SPI monitors the state of active connection and use this information to determine which network packets to allow to the net to the firewall. Okay, so kita ada uh, gambar aja nanti ya. Eh. Apa maksud kat sini, um, bagusnya SPI ni, satu macam biasa, dia boleh, apa function yang semua firewall kita dah belajar tu, dia ada eh, contohnya, dia akan check header and data of the packets, ok, kalau uh, packet filter dia hanya check source address, destination address, source port, destination port, and then dia hanya check protocol. Tapi kalau SPI, dia check sekali data ataupun uh, uh, content of the packets tu eh. And then, uh, apa maksud state kat sini? Apa maksud state kat sini? Once packet tu dah authenticate, okay, dia ada authentication, okay, user dah authenticate, okay, dah login. Once user tu dah login ke firewall tu, and then user akan masuk ke dalam network. Bila user buat, masuk dalam network, dia boleh buat connection, dia boleh ping, dia boleh connect dengan PCA, dia boleh uh, connect dengan PCB. Tetapi apa yang dia, apa yang kita kena tahu, state full packet inspection ni dia akan keep record dan dia akan kenal. Dia akan kenal dan dia akan keep track setiap packet yang berada di dalam network tadi tu, yang dah authenticate tadi tu. So, state full maksudnya kat sini, in current state, in whatever state the the firewall will keep track you. Uh, so, tu maksudnya eh. Ataupun kita panggil state aware. Okay. Okay, state aware. Dia sentiasa aware dengan apa yang berlaku di dalam network tu. Kalau you dah login, dia dah you dah login eh, dia akan keep track you punya IP address dia akan monitor. Jika ada perubahan pada packet you, contohnya you try untuk change your source IP address, contohnya you nak buat IP spoof. So dekat situ dia akan tangkap, dia akan drop, dia akan disconnect you eh, dia akan drop the packet. Okay. So tu dia powerful of uh, SPI. Okay. Kalau uh, you try to make a DOS attack, DNS poisoning, packet poisoning, dia akan dapat detect dan dia akan drop the packet. So, tu dia uh, yang dimasukkan dengan stateful packet inspection. Okay. Okay, so uh, macam kita cakap tadi, uh, the SPI aware of context of packets eh, makes them less susceptible to flooding attacks. Okay. Uh, so, kalau nak buat DOS attack kat SPI ni tadi, tak boleh lah. Macam saya cakap tadi, eh, dia boleh dia boleh check sama ada you ni try uh, untuk buat DOS attack ataupun tidak. It able to know if packet is part of larger stream. You can ask whether source API is within the firewall and can look at the contents of the packet. So, ini semua yang saya cerita tadi. Eh. Kalau you try to buat uh, IP spoofing, uh, dia akan dapat detect. Okay. And then, dia akan check juga dalam packet you ada tak scripting, malware. Okay. Uh, dalam data, data yang data packet yang ada dalam network tu dia boleh check ada tak scripting ataupun any malware coding okey dalam tu so tu yang dimasukkan dengan can look at the contents of the packet so this is an example of spi okey 
So whatever packet flow okay um, ke dalam server ni okay SPI akan aware okay dia akan uh, monitor you lah okay. Okay, these are example of stateful packet inspection. So kita ada Cisco, eh? Cisco, Cisco.com ataupun kebanyakan uh, firewall ataupun uh, network device is provided by Cisco, eh? Yang um, as far as I know lah, okay, uh, for my experience. So another thing is we have Linksys and SonicWall. So these are the example vendor yang mengeluarkan stateful packet inspection. So for now kalau kalau nak kata kita minat ataupun uh, you dah faham firewall, you suka dengan firewall. So you kena keep track on this uh, brand eh, Linksy, Cisco, IBM, Messenger, uh, kita ada uh, Sonic Wall, kita ada Trustkit kat Malaysia ni kan. So keep track on this brand and then look at their website and then tengok the location dekat Malaysia ada ke tak okay and then dekat Malaysia okay cuba tengok ada tak job available eh uh, untuk setiap device ni maksudnya bila you dah tahu every device ni every brand ni maksudnya you boleh target eh pekerjaan you tu based on devices so maksudnya oh I suka antivirus so I nak jadi antivirus engineer so you kena tengok lah dekat Kaspersky Malaysia, Evas Malaysia, McAfee Malaysia. So, you akan, uh, orang lain akan search general position. Contohnya, they check, check, uh, search programmer dekat uh, job suite. Tapi kita tak. Kita cari dekat job suite tu, kita search antivirus engineer. Firewall administrator. Uh, macam tu eh. So, setiap device tu, dia akan ada job dia tersendiri. Sebab, banyak juga kerja sebenarnya eh. Uh, okay, yang nak dikontrol nak kak. Okay, dekat dalam Cisco ataupun uh, dekat dalam IBM itself, dia ada uh, network engineer, dia ada firewall engineer, dia ada antivirus engineer dan sebagainya. Okay, so, it's good eh, for you to learn brand eh, brand to to know what a, a brand available in Malaysia. Okay. So, back to our uh, types of firewall. So, when possible, these are the recommended firewall solution for your organization, which is, which is SPI. Okay. And lastly, once we have learned all types of, all four types of firewall, okay, what uh, the what is the best firewall that you need to implement? Well, actually, it based on your on your organization uh, size. Eh? For example, kalau you punya company tu just ada 10 ataupun 20 uh, user, kita tak tak perlulah pergi sampai SPI application uh, ataupun circuit level. Okay, just enough. Uh, untuk kita pasang atau kita pastikan setiap laptop dalam company tu ada firewall dan firewall tu turn on dan kalau uh, 20 user ni kita dapat detect ada yang banyak bermain game dan barulah kita boleh consider pakai application gateway uh, macam tu eh tapi kalau you jaga um, company yang very uh, very big company is a big company ada 500 ataupun even 100 user ke atas then you need to consider uh, an advanced level firewall lah ataupun kalau kat sini dia suggestkan hybrid firewalls okay so all types of firewall tu kita boleh beli dan kita boleh combine dan kita boleh structurekan lah dalam network structure kita okay Okay, for example, eh, um, uh, you boleh beli SPI combined with circuit level gateway. Ataupun you beli application gateway combined with SPI. So, it depends on your company, situation and problems. Ah. Okay, so that is what we call as hybrid firewall. Okay, uh, we will continue in part 2 uh, about implementing firewall in the next um, video. See you in the next video.